All right, how's everyone doing? Good? All right, you guys, my name is Kevin. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who has struggled with drug addiction and codependency. First of all, welcome to Celebrate Recovery. Yes, um, very blessed, you guys. I have been a part of Celebrate Recovery for the last five years, and I have um, 11 years clean, right? Yeah, so... This program works, you guys. God works, right? So tonight, you guys, uh, we are on Lesson 23, which is entitled Give, all right? And first of all, too, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope you had an amazing time with your family. Um, we got Christmas next uh, month, so we need to, you know, it's this is a great time of the year for us to, to focus, to learn about giving, right? You know, we got to get it all together, you know, with this season coming up. Um, so tonight we're going to be focusing on principle eight and step 12, you guys. All right. So, and just to let you know, this lesson right here came right out of the leadership guidebook. Um, it's almost word for word. Okay. So if you guys want to, uh, revisit this and see it in writing, um, just go to the leadership guide and pull out lesson 23 give. All right. So principle eight, this is what it says, you guys, it says, yield myself to God to be used to bring the good news to others both by my example and by my words, all right? And the connecting scripture for this, you guys, is in Matthew 5, 10, and it says, happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires, all right? So again, we're going to be focusing on step 12, you guys, and step 12 reads, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, right? We try to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all of our affairs, right? And then the connecting scripture for this, you guys, for step 12 reads, brothers and sisters, if some of if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore a person gently, but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. Very important, you guys, and that's in Galatians uh, 6, 1, okay? So, and this is right out of the leadership book. This is what the writer wrote. He said that, if he, if God had to pick a favorite principle out of all our principles, he would pick this one, right? And I'm going to read it again. This is what it says. It says, yield myself to God to be used to bring the good news to others, both by my example and by my words, right? So this principle has a lot in it, and I see why he thought this would be the favorite one. Now, the question is, why is it, right? It's because this principle is putting our faith into action, you know, right? God's word tells us in James 2.17, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is dead, right? Act of faith is important to God, right? Now, don't get me, don't get me wrong, right? Works alone is not going to get you into heaven, right? We know this only through... The faith of, um, of Jesus Christ gets us into heaven, all right? But through our actions, however, right, that we demonstrate our love for God and others and our commitment to our faith, right? Um, James 2.16, this is what it says. It says, um, if, if one of you say, say to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, well fed, but does nothing about the physical need, what good is it, right? In the same way, faith by itself it is not accompanied by action. It's dead, right? Now, the demonstration of our faith is not always about giving something tangible, right? It can be demonstrated in many ways, and we'll talk about that, right? You can show your faith um, in a lot of ways, but the key thing for this is the word action, right? You take action in the situation. Faith without action, right, is dead, so tonight, today, we're going to begin to work on principle eight in the corresponding step, which is step 12. And if you guys didn't know, um, they say that step 12 is called the carrying the message step, right? So we're going to talk about that and the giving back step, okay? So what is giving back all about, right? So the writer of this said that what he did was he went into the Old Testament 
and he started looking up the word give and giving. And to his amaze, there were 17 different Greek meanings for this word. So he thought it would be interesting if, if, if he did, or I did, a 30-minute lecture on each one of the words, right, and his meaning. So what do you, what do you think about that? No? Okay. We won't do that, but we will take a more practical uh, look at the, the meaning of the word give as it relates to uh, our principle eight. Okay, so listen up. Principle eight does not tell us to give in unhealthy ways, ways that would hurt us or cause us to relapse into our codependent behaviors. So important, so important. A lot of times, and this is just, just, just for me, I remember when I got back into my daughter's life, right? I felt like I had a lot of ground to make up, right? So I was giving and I was giving and I was giving. And believe me, she made out. She made out of the situation, but it wasn't healthy giving for me, you know? And I needed to make sure that, you know, I wasn't just doing things just to, to, to make up, right? Because truth be told, you know, if people are not respecting the situation, if you're not doing it in a healthy way, it's going to lead to something that's not good, right? So it's so important for us to make sure that our giving is in a healthy way. And one of our things, uh, one of the healthy ways that Principle 8 is talking about giving is doing without expecting anything back, right? And this is huge for me because, like I said, truth be told, one of my love languages, you guys, is... Um, is compliments or you know recognition right and it's not it's not because I want to be recognized in some crazy way it's just that I work really hard to always um, do my job efficiently I want people to be happy with me and you know and I know that's part of my codependent behavior <laughs> so that's why this hit this hit home with me you guys you know the the healthy way of giving is doing things without the slightest trace of wanting something back, you know? Because a lot of times what we come to, what comes, comes, we come to find out is that what we expect back and what we end up getting back can be totally different. And then when that happens, now we've, we've made things weird, you know? So, um, so we really want to focus on just really meditating with God and, you know, taking out those selfish wants and those selfish needs out of our system um, and really being able to, what God has given to us, just really just hand it over to them, right? Without a slightest trace of wanting anything back. Okay, it says, remember that no person has ever been honored for what they have received. Honor has always been um, a reward for what someone has gave, right? So important. Matthew 10, 8 sums up principle 8. It says, freely you have received, freely you give, right? And also to principle eight, which is very important, it says we yield ourselves to be used to bring the good news to others, both by example and by our words. We're going to talk about that a little bit. So to, uh, today we're going to get into our acrostics, right? And our acrostics is, of course, the word give, right? So I'm going to go ahead and give that to you. And again, remember you guys, if you, and if I'm going too fast, if you want to revisit this, you can look it up inside of the leadership guidebook, okay? Um, the G and good stands for God first, okay? The I in give stands for I became we, right? The V um, in give stands for victory shared, right? And the E in give stands for examples of your actions, all right? So the G stands for God first, all right? It says, when you place God first in your life, you realize that everything you have is a gift from him. Right. You realize that your recovery is not dependent or based on material things. It is built upon your faith and your desire to follow God's direction. So good. So good, you guys. And this is one of the reasons why I love Celebrate Recovery. We hear things like this and we read things like this that really puts things in perspective. One of the things um, that was in my life was it was the, pretty much the devil. He's the author of confusion. I mean, he would literally make me believe that all this stuff belongs to me. And you guys probably can, can attest to what I'm talking about. He, I mean, he makes me believe that the car I have belongs to me. He makes me think that the house I have belongs to me. And then he probably made me believe that the air 
that I breathe and the ground I walk on belong to, to me, right? And truth be told is nothing belongs to us at all, right? Now, God makes us steward of things. We want to be a good steward of it, but in all actuality, everything belongs to Jesus. So when we start meditating on scriptures like this and really start focusing on we start understanding that what we have, we're just handing it off to someone else, you know. Here you go. It was freely given to me. I'm going to freely give to you. It says in Romans 8.32, um, says God did not even God did not even hold back his own son but offered him for us all he gave his son will he not freely give us all things right and this and if you really look deep into this you know as we walk this earth we have a lot of fears and that's why we hold on to things right we hold on to things because we think we might not have uh, it back you know to take care of ourselves you know we look at ourselves get old and we you know, we see, you know, maybe things ha happening in our health. And there's so many things where we just we're based off of a lot of fears. And um, we have to really <laughs> realize that um, if God made sure that the birds in the air have food, you know, does aren't we worth more to to God than, than the birds? You know, so we we have to really just focus on that God's going to take care of my every need. You know, we focus on the day, he'll focus on tomorrow. Do you know what I'm saying? So really, this whole giving thing is just really just handing it off. And God, and freely he gave to us, freely we give. All right? It says we are never more like God than when we give. That's what Jesus did for us. He gave his greatest gift of all. He gave himself. All right? The second letter in give, you guys, is I and when we give, the I becomes we, all right? Now, listen to this. And this is what the writer says. It says, none of the steps or principles begin with the word I. The very first word in step one is we, right? In fact, the word we appears 12 times. Um, uh, uh, we appear in the 12 steps 14 times, excuse me, right? The word I never appears even once in any of the 12 steps, Right? The road to recovery is not meant to be traveled alone, you guys. This is not a program to be worked in isolation. Right? And when I read this, this hit home with me too, you guys, because I remember when I got in recovery, a lot of times, you know, we are in isolation because we have trust issues, right? You know, we don't want too many people in our business, right? We don't want to reach out and, you know, and be friends with someone because we feel like, you know, maybe we're not worthy. There's just so many things that go on. And that thing of isolation just really sets in. But this is telling us that isolation is not going to work. You know, and that's the reason why we have accountability partners, sponsors. That's why we go to as many as meetings as possible. You know, and some of you guys, if, you know, that's been around for a while, a lot of things can happen in isolation. When you don't have somebody to be held accountable to or somebody to talk things through, you know, we result back to our hurt habit and hang up, you know. Uh, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, right? This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself, right? So there's two commands, right? Love God and love your neighbor, right? And we cannot do that in isolation, right? There's two. We only have to, we only have to do two, right? So we want to make sure we take care of that, all right? The third the third letter stands for victory shared, all right? This is what it says. It says, God never, never, ever wastes a hurt, right? He can take our hurts and use them to help others, all right? Principle A gives us the opportunity to share our experiences and victories and hopes with other people. So important. And I'm not sure for you, for you but my end game is what I'm doing, is sharing and helping other people. I do not want the things that I've been through in my life to be in vain, right? But I cannot do that until I'm in a healthy place. And that's why it's so important for lessons like this. This help us to get healthy. We want to make sure we do more good than harm, right? So the end game is sharing our experience. The end game is pulling that, that guy over and saying, hey, I know what you're going through, all right? I've been through the same thing. Deuteronomy 11, 2 tells us to remember what we've learned about the Lord through our experiences with him, right? We start off by saying, this is how it was for me, right? This is the experience of what happened to me, 
right? This is how I gain the strength to begin my recovery and there's hope for you, all right? So this is it, you guys, all right? So the last letter in give is the E and it stands for examples of your actions, all right? You all know that your actions speak louder than words. Good intentions die unless they are executed, right? James 1.22, we are exhorted to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word, right? But in order to be of help to others, we are to bring the good news to others, right? That's what our step 12 is all about. It doesn't say bring a little good news or bring good news only to others who are in recovery, right? You have all heard the term Sunday Christians, right? Let us not become just Friday night buffs, right? We are, that's the end goal too, is to bring the good news, right? To bring the good news and we can bring the good news by using our examples of how God has done things in our life, right? Works and actions are proof of your love for God and other people and other people faith without works is like a car without gasoline all right first john three eighteen says my children love must not be a matter of words or talk it must be genuine